Jamie. Hi, I'm Gemma. From Play to Learn High School. Thank you for joining us today. Today we're gonna to talk to you a little bit about what we do for our name work, which is our arrival activity, our morning work for our younger three-year-old students. Um, all right. <laughs> right before we, push, before we push record, Gemma says, what are we gonna say? And I said, I don't know, let's just go for it. <laughs> Now I'm like, uh... <laughs> we didn't prepare this one quite as much as we usually do um, because it's something that we've done uh, with our for, students for 15 years. For 15 years. So we're just going to tell you how it works. Students use their names as a springboard for all literacy learning. And you've heard us say this before when people ask, what order do you teach the alphabet? Or how do you introduce letters? Our answer is always the same what's important to the child, which is their name. Names. Uh, yes. And their friends' names. Their names, and then their friends' names. M for mommy, D for daddy, all their siblings. That is what is important to them, and that's what we always start with when we think about teaching literacy to our students. Children learn their names in three distinct stages. The first thing they do is they learn to recognize it. They will pick that first letter out and find it at the grocery store or on a street sign or around the house and immediately think that that word is, is their name. Word? Is their word, yes. yes. It's theirs. For example, um, Charlie might be at the grocery store with his mom and he sees a box of Cheerios and he's like, look, there's my name on the box of Cheerios because he's identifying just that first letter. So the first thing they do is they learn to recognize it. And then second, they learn to spell it. Spell it. Spell it orally. My name is Jamie. J A M I E. Oh, Gemma. Thank you. G E M M A. You sure it's a G? Gemma. Definitely a G. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, the third stage of name learning is when they already know how to recognize it, when they are already spelling their name orally. Then the third stage is they start to write it. In our experience, it's best that that sort of starts organically. So it's not that they're tracing their name that the teacher has written, but that they're using their knowledge of what their name looks like, what their friends' names look like, and how to spell it, and then they start to write it. I mean, they can't really do that until they have the others down. I'm so gonna can't push that. Can't push it until they start to recognize and spell their names exactly. Yes. I'm gonna give you a quick example from my own daughter, who's now 16, so I can tell the story of when she was two and she's not quite as embarrassed. Mm -hmm. um, so my daughter's name is Leah, L-E-A-H. And the first time that she wrote her name, it was in the driveway with sidewalk chalk. We were sitting outside, it was a beautiful spring day. She was about two and a half. She's the firstborn girl, so overachiever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she drew a great big L right in the middle of the driveway. She said, look, I wrote my name. I said, that's really great. You know, you did, you wrote your L. I said, your name is Leah, L-E-A-H. And she kind of like looked at me like, I can write the other letters. And so then she wrote a giant E. She said, there's E, L-E, E is for Evan. That was her, bro that it was her brother's name. It still, still is her brother's name. name, E for Evan. And then she's like, L-E-A-H. And I can see her singing it to herself. L-E-A-H, A is Anna's letter. Her cousin. Still her cousin. Still her cousin. And so she wrote a giant A. So she's got L, E, A. And then she's like, H. Oh, we don't know anybody who's an H. And so she's like, oh no. And I said, oh, our next door neighbor, your babysitter is Holly. Holly's name starts with an H. She's like, I can write Holly's letter. And so she writes a giant H. And she's so proud of herself because she's written L, E, A, H right in the driveway. When students can recognize their name and their friends' names, and they can spell it orally, then that writing piece really falls into place quickly and easily. Okay, all of that to say that when our three-year-old preschoolers arrive at school each day, they do an arrival activity. So you know from teaching preschool that when they come in, not everybody is ready at the exact same moment. They're not. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> they just walk in Sometimes and everybody's it like... it takes kids long to take off their backpacks and hang up their coats, where some are like speedy fast. Exactly, and so we always have some type of a table game or an arrival activity. For our threes, it's always a name game, a name activity. And so we're gonna share with you what we're doing each month with our threes for their name activity, and then also how we encourage the parents to keep these activities at home and continue to work with their kids so that they can master writing it eventually. Okay, so if you've been following along, we have our plans, our scope and sequence sort of planned out for the year. And the second thing on the chart at the top of things that we do monthly. First we have our unit plan and then our name arrival activities. So we're gonna go through and show you what we are doing each month. You'll also know if you've been following, we change it sometimes. 
we've just amended it just a tiny just bit. A tiny bit. <laughs> Sometimes that happens, we get a better idea or yeah. we think of something that we will work. We have a moment. We're like, ooh, we should try that. Your mom is watching. She oh, can't see because she needs reading glasses. <laughs> you caught us live, mom. We're live. Hi. Hi, hi mom. <laughs> Miss you. The... And I spelled my name right. <laughs> <laughs> the name arrival activity that we do the very first month is super simple. It is a name strip, a sentence strip, and we put letter stickers on it, but you could just write it with a Sharpie. We've done that in the past too, yeah. sometimes. And the next time I do this, it will be uh, with Sharpie because I've run out of certain We're letters. out of letters. And on the back, we put a sticky business card pocket. So they sell these at the office supply store. You're supposed to, I think, what do normal people use these for? I feel like a normal person would have these business card pockets inside like a binder and they will like stick a business card or something in there. But we don't do that. We just stick them in there so that they can put their little pieces. Yeah. So, you don't even have business cards anymore. I'm, I don't know. <laughs> Real people? Yeah. I don't know. So we just put their little pieces in there. These are calendar cutouts from, oh, I don't know. Something Trend, like that. teacher I, I created know, resources, teacher, teacher created that. resources, that's what I'm gonna say. And each one has a letter of their name. If the students are younger, we do start with their capital letters because those are easier for them to recognize. Um, but you can do it either way. So take the idea, if you hate our idea of using capitals, you can use lowercase with your own kids. Our kids are very young, just turned three. And so the capitals work better. Yeah. So what they do is lay their, that, like that would be lovely, yeah, thank you. Yes, <laughs> you are such a good preschooler. Thank you. They lay their sentence strip on the floor right in front of them. Which is we're balancing. Normally we have it on the ground. <laughs> Don't get them to balance Don't it. Don't balance it, do it on the ground. And they just match up the little pieces um, of their name like this and when they're done we say either can you repeat the letters after me say c c o o you're so smart l l e e yes good job cole and then they take their pieces and just stick them in the back some of them are ready to actually spell it themselves without you punching them every now and again sometimes but if they're not it's okay they put this away and then they can look at a book while we wait with everybody else so it's just a quick little name activity okay so if you don't have old calendar pieces or whatever, or access to them, you can just cut out shapes from a piece of card. Easy peasy. Right on them. Don't, you don't have to overcomplicate your lives like we tend to sometimes, sometimes do. That's our worst character trait, I think. Mm -hmm. How can we make this more complicated for, us. <laughs> for ourselves? <laughs> um, here's another example. Sometimes we do stars. Yeah. You don't have to overthink it. Sometimes, if you want to be thematic, Go with your seasons, whatever. You can do, say, little gingerbread people. Gingerbread people, I think that was Henry. Oh, Henry, we, we missed you, yeah. how's first grade? Yeah. Okay. So, that? Oh, so cute. Leaves. Leaves, you oh, could pick them, something them. seasonal. You could use Henry. the same sentence strip for two months in a row and just change the pieces out to keep it fun and exciting for your students. Fun and exciting. Fun, fun and exciting. This is what we are actually doing with our actual real students this month. Um, we have, if you see here on our scope and sequence, that they were going to do the um, leaves. leaves. Oh, we forgot I wanted, to order the leaves. Yeah, That's I, the truth. I was like, oh, let's just do something different. We decided to do something different. Hello from Australia. Hello, hello. These are for our three-year-old students. So this is a piece of cardstock that we just printed through the printer with circles on it. They're um, an inch and a half. We glued it to another piece of cardstock. Just so it's stronger. Durability. And then we glued. You don't have to do that. You don't have to make your life complicated. It could we just do, be a plain piece of paper. We like to overthink things. Hi, we're Jamie and Gemma. We make our lives more complicated every day. Don't we like it. How can we do this harder? <laughs> and it's just an envelope that we glued. And I put some, I put a little Velcro dot. Otherwise, I, they put them in and everything falls out. So that's just like for me. So when they go to the carpet, they're supposed to dump their um, chips out like this and then they use their board. So these are uh, poker, poker chips. chips. But we call them counters. Poker counters. No, I didn't say poker. So you gotta know what they were and when to hold them. They're just counters. Know when to hold them. If you don't have them, you can just cut circles out. You could just use circle dots. We tried that with our foam dots and the um, the markers kept rubbing off. Yeah. So that's why we want poker chips. And all they we do- We don't call them poker chips, we just call them count counters. Today's lesson, kids, is gonna be how to play Texas Hold'em. <laughs> Tomorrow we'll learn blackjack. No, I'm teasing. 
We gotta do Everybody that. needs to know how to count to 21, right? <laughs> I'm teasing. They're old. Someone donated them. That's why I have a big we pile have of so them. We have so many of them. We're like, so many we things. should use these for something. We'll Let's get them. rid of them. So we just put a little sticker with their name on it. Doop, doop. And they have to just match it up I on their... I, no. I'm, I'm only holding the A, but... They have to just match it up on their board. Again, so, they're working on the carpet. It's not... You don't balance it. Because <laughs> that would be really <laughs> difficult and it would be very frustrating oh, for you None of the them. kids could master that. Mm -hmm. Balance it and put their name. So they're just working on the carpet. They spell their name. We do the same thing. Brayden, can you spell your name? Say B. B. R. A. Do you know this one? A. Ooh, you're so smart. B. E. N. Nice. And then when they're done, high five. High five. Give your brain a kiss. You're so smart. Thank you, Dr. Jean. They go back. Now, this is also part of the, um, the uh, learning here. It's getting them back into the envelope. It's actually tricky. Tricky, tricky. to do this. So, don't do it for them. Don't do it. Your dad says hi. Hi, dad. Hi, oh, it's like hi, a family dad. reunion. Just need, <laughs> just need my sister and we're all here. Um, so just making sure they do it themselves. They can just put, put their little chips in. That's it. We're That's just it. kind of teaching them to take care of their materials, right? And practice their names. Double goal lesson, which is our favorite yeah, kind. Yeah. They, we store them on our circle time carpet in this little basket. They put it back and then they get out a book. Yeah. Easy enough. Here's what we have planned for November. These are name books. So November is a short month for us, and these are this is a short activity. What they do, um, this is super simple to make. I have a form where you just type the child's name in, and it spits out all the pages for you. And so, oh, it doesn't spit it, it really prints it. See, that's simple. That is so simple. And then I make it complicated then by backing it. Then she cuts them up and puts them on cardstock. You could just cut them and staple them. Yeah, but That I would don't. be so easy. <laughs> Why would you do the easy way? So the kids can read their name book. This is my name is Justin. This is my name book, and there is a reason why I chose to do that. It because makes it more sturdy. It does, and also, the kids who are still struggling to recognize their name, they can remember, oh, mine's on green. I know that mine is green. Green, I will find my own book. And it helps the kids who are struggling a little bit. If you have, you can do some various colors. Colors, it's gonna, it may be help some of those kids who are not quite there yet. You'll notice that on all of our name activities, we kind of color code them so they can find Especially it. Especially when we have the, not this one, but when we have different pieces, if you have them on different colors, when they dump them all out and they haven't closed their bags properly, then you can find them. All different. Because you know that someone says green, and someone says blue, and someone says red. You're so smart. Thanks. For this one, they just read each page. J, J, jack-o-lantern. U, U, umbrella. S, S, sunshine. T, T, tree. Which I know is not the perfect one because it's a digraph or a blend, but what are you gonna do? I, I, in, N, N, notebook. My name is Justin. So it's just reading, practice reading each page. Super simple. And I'll leave a link because those are really easy to print and go. For December. And you don't have to your name. Them. You can just stick it. This is your name, Miss Gemma. For this one, we make these little craft stick pockets. And it is just a piece of cardstock that we have folded in, not in half, folded a little lip of it up. Like a pocket. Uh -huh. And then we use a long arm stapler. I have a video that shows how to do this. And we've stapled, yeah, can you see those? We kind of like staple it's these not high pockets. Tech. Not high tech. And and they're not even lined up quite, I mean, the, the, the things are, but the staples are not, not even, so it's okay. It's okay. And then on the back, we glued an envelope to cover up the pokey parts of yeah, the don't staples. don't want any, anyone getting poked by a staple. So when they come to the circle time carpet, they'll get their name out like this. You could even put a picture My if they're tablet. still having a hard time. Or color. Then they take their pieces out. And the way we did this one is it's all written in a uh, sentence case, but the sticks are um, upper on one side, except for the first the first letter is upper, upper, um, and lower on the other. So if they're starting to make the connection between the upper and lowercase letters, or they only know the uppercase letters or vice versa, then they can pick the one that they're more comfortable with. And they just slide them in, which is really good hand-eye coordination. Fine motor. Motor skills, yes! And again, when they're done, let's see if we can spell your name. It's the fourth month, so can you do it yourself? G-E-M-M-A. Woo, you're so smart. Go me. Go you. I think you might be ready for kindergarten in two years. You might go to kindergarten. I know me either. We're stuck here, perpetual preschool. Okay, in January, we have a name clip activity. 
So for this one, we miss you. Hi, Elise. This is not Elise because hers is I. Elise Engelhardt is I. Okay, I'm upside down. I feel like I'm okay with. Okay, she said we weren't gonna say anything. Our camera is switched round. We're doing it the right way for you, and so and you, it's so confusing. And I, I gotta like, bump this way. I can't Go this read way. this stuff. <laughs> I'm crashing. It's all good. <laughs> so for this one, we make. Uh, this is a piece of cardstock folded and glued in half Thanks, for mom. durability. I feel like you should text your mom before we go live every time and tell her to watch us because she's like our best cheerleader. Yeah. Right? My, your mom is always your best cheerleader. She right? really is. You like when you watch us, Gemma's mom. <laughs> These are spring-loaded clothespins from the dollar store. Pegs. Pegs. Well, a peg to me doesn't have a spring. Okay. Would you still call Anyone it in England, would you call it with a spring it's still a peg? I always think of them as just the wood ones. That's also a peg. I think, okay, people in Australia, in England, do you call this a peg or New pen? Zealand, anywhere else apart from America, what do you call these? Clothes peg, with a spring-loaded clothes peg. <laughs> and we wrote their letters, the same thing, upper, upper for the first letter, and then uh, upper, upper case, lower. Up see, we're backwards, we have no, uppercase and lowercase for the, uh, the other letters. And they take them all off, and then we sing this little song. You've gotta mix it, mix it. You've gotta mix it, mix it. You've gotta fix it. And then they have. <laughs> I think that's from Madagascar. I think it is, but it, at the time that we introduced this, that was in the movie. I know. It used to, the kids used to know what that was from. They don't. I still sing it. And then they um, just clip. Pegs, see, peg. And ah, peg. all right. Oh, in Canada, it's a. Pin. Okay, peg. thanks Canadians. You need to tell Solidarity. me where you're from though when you say Solidarity. Peg, peg, South Africa. I will never call it a peg. It's just the rest of the world calls it a peg. <laughs> for America and it's Canada. totally a clothespin for me. And they just clip them on. Same thing. Can you spell your name? E-L-Y-S-E. -E. And then we put it back in the basket. Ta-da! Fine motor, literacy letters, all the things rolled into one. And colors. And colors. It's perfect. In nothing's perfect in preschool. No, it's as perfect it's a goal. as it gets. <laughs> in February, we use our Scholastic bonus points to purchase Unifix cubes. Are these the generic ones? Or are these no. are the real ones? Ooh. And we put them you in. You can get generic ones that are cheaper. You can get cheap generic ones from the Target dollar spot for the Dollar Tree. And we put them in a little bag with their name written on a card. Hi, Caroline. We miss you. She's in kindergarten, <laughs> and she never got her name activity. I kept it. Sorry, Carol. Sorry. <laughs> and then what we did is we wrote their name on a little sticker. This one is this trickier. is tricky. This, this is, is, is high level teaching. Later on, do not put this out the first month, second month. No, it's got towards the end, end of, of the year. End. end of the year. This is well, February. Middle, we were being middle. a little ambitious. Okay, so what they do is take their. Um, Can you do that and hold that? No, for sure. That's why I'm offering them okay. to you. I got those two. You've got the A. Okay. okay. So then they're going to build their name out of Unifix cubes. Okay, there we go. Okay. Should I look for the... Here we go. Okay, thanks. And here's what you need to know when you're the teacher who's putting these together. Because the first time we did this... It's hard to do it backwards on the phone. We messed it up big time. We did. We so, learned from our mistakes. Don't be... Don't be like us. So what you want to do is make the letters go so that they would... If they were building it as a tower, goes from the first letter to the last letter. The way that I did it was first letter to the last letter, and they all built their names backwards for like a week. And we were like, why are you doing that? Why you don't have to spell your name? Why are happening? Everybody's doing their name backwards. Then we realized it was because we put their name trains together backwards. So that was not smart. So don't be like us. Make sure it goes from we the bottom done to the top. Since, though, we, we learned our lesson. We peeled after school that day. We peeled every We peeled sticker all off. the stickers off, flipped them all over, and did it the right way because we were like, what's going on? All of a sudden, all of our kids have just left me <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, you I understand. See, I'm like, look, I'm like. Anyway, they just put it together. Same thing, spell this their name. This is tricky. This is hard, because there's no model. They just have to do it but, free form. So we have kind of a model, so if they still don't know the order in which their letters are, keep, have their name available for them. Yes. And then, it's tricky. when they're done, they just put all the pieces back in, zip it up, and they like dump it in the off. basket. Easy, this is good for fine motor skills and hand strength and eye coordination as well. Mm. Ta-da. Yeah, and they have to try and zip the baggie up, which is really hard. They have trouble with that. These are life skills people, because next year they're going to be in, well, two years they're going to be in kindergarten, and they have to be able to eat lunch in the cafeteria. So. And open the ziplock bag. <laughs> All the things. And then another really easy do-it-yourself, low-tech option. 
okay. is to make. We, well, I was gonna say we can use something for a base there, but I don't know. Yeah, we can. See, we didn't think this through very well. I know. I've got an yeah, idea. I've I got no, a look. Look. Oh, I'm, yes. Oh, okay, that works. Okay, I'll balance. Mm, don't balance them all. You don't need to balance them. Okay. We have a little mess to clean up. So what they're gonna do here is we wrote their name oh. on a piece of white cardstock. And then we adhered it to sticky craft foam. It's so fancy. You can buy sheets adhered of this adhered. We stuck it to the sticky craft foam. Yeah. We stuck it to the sticky foam. We stuck it to the sticky side of the sticky foam. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so you it, don't need a you don't need a uh, Xyron for this. No, it's, it's, it's sti just buy the foam that's sticky. It comes in four by six sheets, and it's a big sticker. You peel the sticker part off, you stick that stick on. their name on. So do the, that first, and then cut it apart like a puzzle. Like a puzzle, and you don't have. You can see that we did not do this very. Ooh, we did not do this very neatly because it's hard. we're upside down too. Okay. It's tricky. Okay, do it. There's only one end. Where's the other end? It's still in the bag, I think. Sure, you that was that lucky. Too. They'll be like, I don't have all my letters. And then you're like, well, what are you going to do about that? And then they realize they're sitting it's on it or it's in, their, it's still in their it's usually envelope in their bottom. or bag. So that's it. So then they just put their little puzzle together. And, and this is when I would really suggest doing different colored foam. Because when they have them all spread out on the carpet and they can't find their end, it's because someone else has their N. So and everyone has an and E. And if anyone has an E in their name, which a lot everyone of people does. Do. So you're going to get them mixed up, and then it's so and difficult because then, then you have to try and figure out who's missing what. So if you have them colored, then you can at least narrow it down of who's missing it and why has so and so got someone else's left. We speak from experience. I they will get lost. Yeah, do them all different learned, colors. This is, we've learned over the years don't do that like us because we. We're teaching you uh, terrible mistakes that we've learned. <laughs> I think they sell that adhesive craft foam in packs of like 20, and there are 20 mm -hmm. different colors. So it should work. Use a coupon. Use a coupon. <laughs> we always use, use a coupon. coupon. <laughs> you get 40% off that stuff. That's good. It works out to be like, I think it's about, I bought some the other day, and it was about $4, I think, for a, a pack. Craft foam? Yeah. Oh. Because I use my coupon. Always use a coupon. <laughs> We might start a couponing vlog, maybe, oh, about like no. all the cheap things we can buy. And finally, we have the kids start putting all of those things together. And the very last month of school, we do what we call a name folder. This is my sweet Olivia when she was in pre-K. Now she's... This is maybe preschool. I don't know. She's in pre-K. Anyway, she's in fourth grade now. Um, but it is a... Every kid gets their own file folder. And then on the inside, we print two pages. This one uh, at the top has a spot for them to touch the dots and spell their name, O-L-I-V-I-A. And then this is a very sensory way to trace it with their finger. So I'm gonna hold it close so you can see. It is hot glue, glitter hot glue from the Dollar Tree. And Gemma just traces their name with this glitter hot so glue. This, don't, you're gonna have to prepare this maybe a day before because you think, this oh, it's only thing. gonna take a minute. And these take some time. It, it takes a little bit of time. Yes. And so they spell it, they trace it, and then down here they're gonna make it. So on the back, we have um, the same adhesive craft foam. Look, these are yellow too. That was just a coincidence. I, no, I don't think it was. It wasn't a coincidence? Mm -mm, I matched. No, I mean that the last one oh, was those, yellow and yeah. this one is yellow. And like, I normally try and match as many things as okay. I can. So they take their pieces it's out. Oh, it's matched to the front. That's what I'm thinking. Let's right. See. But I just meant yellow, that Jenny's yellow. puzzle was yellow too. That wasn't planned. Not planned. And then they're going to build their letter. So it says, I can make it. So they take their little pieces. And we're kind of just putting together all the things we've been practicing during the whole school year for morning work. So this is a lot more complicated, which is why we do it last. Because there are many steps. This is first, right? We're kind of working up to it. Build the letter, trace the letter, make the name. Obviously this would be on the ground yes. too. Not Don't balance. balance it. And then they make it. And the very last thing is the coolest. This is gonna fall. Thank you for making my name. It says, I can write it. And this is um, dry erase tape by Scotch. It's in the Scholastic Bonus Catalog if you'd like to use your free points for it. Or you can get it from Target or Office to supply stores, etc. And what they do... I was just <laughs> I was just reading Katie's comment. Hi! I, I often have a lot of the glue on me. When I Elmer's glitter glue would work if you've yeah. got the patience. 
Yeah. Yes. Um, I okay. often get the hot glue on my hands. I don't use a high temperature one because I tend to burn myself because I'm not that great with it either. That's why it <laughs> takes me so long. Sorry. But I do appreciate you doing these. Gemma is definitely like the one who prepares all the activities um, every month for our kids. So this last one, you can just use a dry erase marker. We glued a pom-pom to the top, or you could throw in a makeup circle remover thing. Or you can just have a tissue of cotton balls out. That works. Whatever. And then they can write their name down here because they've I been did, practicing it. If she did that upside down. Upside down. That's impressive. I didn't do it backwards. Well, just I, upside I down. Feel like I and then they just backwards. erase it. So this is a really old just one, like five years old, which makes it kind of show its age. Um, but they can just practice writing, and then just have a dry erase. Yes, I did say it was straight. I was, I was reading comments. That's they why I didn't, also I didn't sell pay any attention to it. I was reading pink and blue dry erase tape. Yeah. And we were also thinking uh -huh, that we might try printing these on colored paper so that the kids don't use their marker to write on the white paper. Yeah, because sometimes we, they get mixed up. We've noticed that it's a bit confusing. So we need to really um, differentiate between these two. We've learned that. Five years, still a work in progress. And then at the very end of the year, they get to take this whole folder home, which they get so excited. I give them the dry erase marker and everything, which is like the highlight of their lives, right? And I tell them, now you have this, you need to practice over the summer. So when you come to pre-K, you're writing your name and spelling it and reading it, et cetera, et cetera. One of our important jobs as preschool teachers is to make this homeschool connection so the parents understand and know and appreciate what the kids are learning at school. So we are um, sending these home at the end of each month, the one that we're finished with. We're gonna send them home with our preschool, like we always have, but we're starting this new thing where I'm gonna send a note with it that says sort of why we're doing these name so activities. So we've already explained why to you guys just a minute ago. Here it is for the parents. Yeah. And also asking them, please save each of these name activities. Every month you're gonna get a new name activity that's come home that they've already done at school save them in a little basket that they can reach themselves or a box make a spot on a shelf for your kids to be able to reach so that this is another toy or activity in their arsenal at home so they can continue to practice their names because what we find is that kids maybe can recite the spelling of their name um you know c-a-r-t-e-r -E carter c-a-r-t-e-r but they don't necessarily, if you like point out the middle letter, they don't know which one it is. So they need to continue to practice it. It's not something that they can do for a week and be done. Mm -hmm. um, I actually saw in the Facebook group, somebody was like, next week I'm gonna teach my kids their names. Does anybody have any suggestions? And I was like, oh no. Listen, that's like a whole thing, like a year, two years of them learning their names and being it's able little to. Little steps, little steps. Um, but if you send these letters home with the name activities, then the parents will start to practice at home too. The thing is, you want to make sure that you don't get frustrated and they are not getting frustrated. So if you do this in small steps of things that they are able to do, it's going to give them confidence to be able to move on to the next step. If you jump straight in with something that's too hard, they're going to be very discouraged and therefore the behaviors you'll see will be difficult maybe. Frustration, and frustration behavior is bad. And then you get upset, they get upset. It's no fun. Have fun at preschool. <laughs> Try our name activities. I will leave a link in the video description to all of these um, pictures of all of these activities, um, to the ones that you can print. And then I also have this saved in our Google Drive. If you want to print it and send it home with your own name activities for your preschool parents, you're welcome to do that. If you have any other questions that we didn't catch while we were live, we'll come back to the um, comments and leave the answers. So feel free to leave more comments. And we always hope that you are having fun, playing and learning with your kids. We'll see you next time. Bye everybody. Bye.